my predictions for Biology Paper 2 last year were really, really good. I was amazed when I saw the paper how close they were. I got the practical right, I got the big, big question right, and I came up with some of those random questions, the one that threw people that didn't really understand, and I was speaking to teachers and they've said, oh, sometimes when you've got that mock coming up, I just point them in your direction. And it's really easy to see the people that pay attention to your video and the people that didn't pay attention to your video. So, that was a good paper. My chemistry papers are really, really good as well. But how good are my predictions? Mm, is it actually worth listening to me? Is it worth downloading and doing the predictive papers that I wrote? These are questions that I get asked a lot. So in this video, I'm gonna answer them for you. Over my website, you can download predictive papers for science, for geography, and for maths. Now, these subjects are all very different, um, and the way we do predictions for them is very different. So, I'm going to take them subject by subject. I have been making predictions for science papers for years. It started off just giving them out to my class and then when I started a YouTube channel I made a little video predicting what I thought was going to be on I think it was tomorrow's exam I think I put it out the day before and then I, I started to get right like quite a lot when you kind of like do as many papers, see as many papers, read as many documents from the government in the exam boards as I do because it's basically all I spend my time doing is looking at science questions, looking at um science exam papers I don't know what it is but I just start to get feelings about things and I know this is like the least scientific thing ever but I'm kind of like oh I think that paper's going to come up on this year's exam and you know I'm sure these feelings are based on how much reading and how much research that I do and if I know what's come up on last year's exam I know they have to cover the specification a certain amount of time we know that 15% has to be practicals we know that 10% 20% 30% has to be maths it's actually well it's quite fun doing predictions for papers and then you can sit there and you can think about well last year they asked this two years ago they asked this but they didn't ask this so that's what I think is going to come up this year. As we get further and further through this specification, the predictions are going to get better and better. And that's the thing with predictions, especially last year's predictions, that they are just predictions. My biology paper 2 was amazing and the people that watched my video and then did that paper had a massive boost when they went into the exam. My chemistry was really, really good as well, but my physics, all well, those papers weren't so good but they're still good revision and that's the thing with predictions they are just predictions i am not an examiner i do not have any insider knowledge i do not know exactly what is going to be on the exam the exams take about 18 months to write they get checked um they get triple checked quadruple checked i think i don't know about that they go through lots and lots of rounds like I don't see the exam papers until after you've done them I do not know what is going to be on these exam papers I can just write predictive papers and I can make videos based on my research and what I think is going to come up so while the predictive papers on my website are brilliant revision for you because you need to do as much practice papers as you can they are not actually going to be the ones that are on the day. There are backup papers in case the actual papers get leaked, but me predicting papers isn't leaking papers because I haven't seen the papers. As hard as I work to make these predictions, as much thinking and as research as I do before I start making the predictive papers, I'm never going to be 100% right because these are just predictions. So it is absolutely vital that you revise everything. For the geography papers I have an amazing friend who is working on the geography. She has gone through basically the same process that I go through for science writing the geography papers and they are brilliant. There's an AQA specific paper and then because like don't ask me why they did this for geography there were like so many other specs. AQ, educast A, educast B, 
why 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 do you do this that there's an aqa specific paper on the website and then there was like a general one for other exam papers and there's a little bit of extra guidance in those papers to help you work out which bits you do and you don't need for maths you do three papers except ocr who do two um and there is such a breadth we don't know what topics we're going to come up on which exam but what we basically know is that everything's going to come up so revise everything so just do as many practice questions as you can for maths it's just just do as many practice questions as you can for maths so there's like lots of maths papers for you to download on my website these papers shouldn't be your only revision you should do the exam papers from the uh exam boards you should do workbook questions you should do questions your teacher sent you in class you should practice six markers you should practice graph drawing um but they are good revision so I made for you and good luck guys. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.